Hey, wrestling fans, this is and True Followers and members of the YWC. Brian Crazy here. JC Styles. JC Styles? High five. Hey! Back at you with our TNA Impact Wrestling Review for 7 7 2011. And we both are prepared this week. Hey! You like that? Notes, formats, like the real pros do it. We promise you the very best in best wrestling sports reviews. In wrestling entertainment. Oh. Oh, wrestling, yes. keyword wrestling. All right, matters. It does. Very. A lot. Much so. A whole bunch. Okay. Moving on. 300th episode of Impact. It was a pretty damn good show. Three. Yeah, I know. Wow. 300. 300. Is a, yes. I know. Um. What a milestone. And uh, I remember, uh, not to dwell on it too long. I remember watching, tuning in One Impact uh, when it was on Fox Sports Network, and I saw P.D. Williams versus A.J. Styles for the X Division title. And from that moment, I tried as best as I could to try to find what kind of... I knew what the company's name was, but like to find like when the new episodes aired or whatever. Then I started wa Then I bought the DVDs, and, you know... I've been a fan ever since. If I ever get a chance to meet Jeff Jarrett or meet AJ Styles, I want to tell them that they got me into watching TNA wrestling. Oh, that's that's exactly what I saw Jeff Jarrett at the, uh, the event I went at early in the year. I walked up to him and I went, it's the founder. And he kind of just gave me this strange look like, okay, this guy is a little nuts here. <laughs> but, no, Jeff Jarrett is very cool. Uh, Post-event, he did stay and sign autographs for free. Not a $45 appearance fee or anything of that nature. For yeah. free, he signed autographs for anybody who waited for him. While we are talking about appearances, Saturday, if you live in the tri-state area of Connecticut and you live around the, the Waterford, if you, live, if you live in the Waterford, Middletown, Cromwell, Berlin, New Britain, if you live in Connecticut, if you live in Connecticut period, or Rhode Island, Crystal Mall, Saturday from 1 to 3, Mr. Anderson in former manager of the Body Donnas, LOD, and Chris Candido, Sonny, will be signing autographs or, from 1 to 3. Or which I will be attending. Hopefully, my buddy here, if, sure his car, if his car is out of the shop and he can make it, he will be there. Exactly, exactly. Just waiting on the wheels to get back. I got two Hondas, but uh, my wife takes one of them to work, and the other one, hey, if it's not back, it's not back. But... Anderson from uh, in first segment of the night. First segment of the night. We start off with Immortal. They come down to the ring. Bully Ray Steiner and Gunner start off Impact. They basically call out Anderson. They try to convince Anderson to join them. Yes. I mean, what do you got for that segment? Um, pretty much just basically a quick rundown. Uh, like Brian said, uh, Bully Ray calls out uh, Anderson and basically tells him, Look, you can't beat Sting without our help. You wouldn't have won the title if it wasn't for Eric Bischoff. And we know that Anderson is cocky and he doesn't see it that way. Well, Gunner's been giving him a lot of help as of late as yes. well. And, um, you know, the whole outcome of this promo is that, you know, Bully Ray tells him, look, you can't beat us without, you can't beat Sting without our help. You want to keep BS champion, join Immortal. Then uh, Steiner, you know, basically gives him the rundown of what's going to happen yeah, Steiner, if he doesn't join. Steiner basically says, hey, if you don't join us, you're going to have a problem with me. Yes. And that, I think, would be, it's not the way it plays out. I don't want to, you know, spoil the end of this review for you. No. But I think that would have been one of the ways to go at it. Elevate Steiner to the main event. Because yes. there's not a lot of players in the main event. And Steiner has the credibility to be a main event player. He's already been there in multiple WCW. WCW TNA. He's already been there in multiple organizations, and he can do it again. Yeah, and then basically, then we see Gunner get on the mic, and he's basically like, you know what? You know, I do have to admit, Gunner's promo was fire tonight. Yes, it was. I mean, he did have a lot of emotion behind his words, and he didn't stumble at all. He was very precise. He knew what he was saying. This connected with here, and yeah. it was just, it was good work. It was, and you know, post thing, uh, you know, uh, Gunner gets on the mic and he says, "Look, Ken." It's like, he gives him an ultimatum. He's like, you join us, or we're going to have problems. Exactly. Then he goes, hey, hit our music, and then we cut. <laughs> this is when the night yeah. starts to get a little good. It definitely. Uh, we see the lights go off in the impact zone, and you see Sting all, like, Joker mocked out. And 
Then the lights come back on, and Angle's in the ring and just completely clears house. And then you see Anderson's kind of in the corner, and he Kurt walks over and was like, doesn't even say anything. He's like, Ken, you need to make the right decision, and it better be the right one. You need to make a decision, and it better be the right choice. Yeah, better be the right choice. Basically saying, if you join Immortal, you're going to have big problems with me and Stinger. Yeah, exactly. And, uh, you know... Yet again, where Scott Steiner kind of comes into play, I would have really liked to see Steiner aligned with Sting and Angle, yes. more like the main event Mafia than the Immortal. But I do have to admit, Steiner adds a lot of credibility to Immortal now. Yes, it does. Uh, yes, he does. Uh, then we move into a um, backstage promo right before the commercial break. Yep. We uh, see James Storm and Robert Roode. James, uh, Robert was just getting ready to come out for his match, and basically you hear James Storm, how's your arm? He's like... You know, and he's going like this, and you see him favoring it, but he's like, I got to get out there, and I got to, you know, get some points on the board. And James was like, go out there and get your points. I'll be back when you come, when you get back. Yeah, exactly. It is a Bound for Glory Series match that he will be having in Crimson uh, in the next segment. Uh, it is very important to Robert Roode, just, you know, not just important to Robert Roode, but very important uh, for Robert Roode's career at this point to score some points and get on this leaderboard, because right now, Roode is far behind on yeah, the leaderboard. He's, uh, he's got zero still. So. Exactly. Yes. And he's far behind on the leaderboard. Um, then we kind of hear that uh, Storm will be teaming up with Matt Morgan to so later in the night to go against the Pope and Devon. Did he say beer print? Is that what Robert Roode said as he was leaving the? As or did he, he say beer giant? I don't know. I thought he said beer. You know, I honestly couldn't remember. I was kicking myself in the ass that I didn't write it down. I was like, fuck. The one you know funny off ball thing James Storm said it the whole night, man. <laughs> yeah. I forgot to write it down. No, Robert Roode said it. Robert Roode said it? Yeah, he James said it was on the way out. Oh, I thought James Storm said it. Yeah, James Storm does say some hilarious yeah, shit, man. But it'll only be like one or two liners the whole night. It was like when I went to uh, see Impact, uh, not Impact, I'm sorry, when I went to go see the house show uh, back in, I, was, I believe it was 08 in January. Um, you know, this was when Storm was with Jacqueline, and we saw Rhino versus uh, Gail Kim, with, uh, Rhino and Gail Kim versus... Uh, no, I'm sorry. It was Rhino and Tracy Brooks versus James Storm and uh, Jackie. Jack yes. And, uh, you know, there was a fan next to us who was like, Hey, what are you doing with a black chick? You're not black. And he looks at the guy. He's like, I'm black from the waist down. Just ask your mama. <laughs> and I was like, you know, it's fan interactions and stuff like that when makes okay. going to see live wrestling events. Well, I, let me let me, let me, let me rephrase that. Going to see TNA worth it. Because you get WWE, you get hey, stuff hey. with WWE, but the, but the thing is, though, I mean, it's not as family-friendly, it's not as, it's not as uh, fan-friendly as TNA is. Hey, you can't deny, though, I know we're doing a TNA review here, but I'm going to take just 20 seconds to bust this down. When we went to that Raw House show earlier in the year, we were sitting four for row guys. We got a great colleague to do some big chops. Yes, on Alex and we Riley, also yes. got... I feel, now I can feel kind of bad because I like Alex Riley. <laughs> Same here. We were like, do it again. Wow. And he looks right at us and smiles like, that one's for you guys. You know, well, if it was, you know, it was Kali, so he's like, I don't know. Da, da. Yeah. And then, um, how about when uh, we got Ted DiBiase? Yeah. Uh, my dad's like, Ted, I'm your number one fan. Go, Ted, go. And he's like, shut up. He's like, shut up. And then how about... Back to TNA. Remember the house show? The, uh, you went there with your dad, right? And he was Team, three, team 3D uh, was picking on this little boy because he was a Red Sox fan. And my dad turned to him and was like, Hey, Bubba, you suck. Why are you picking on the little Red Sox fan? Go back to ECW. And he goes, Fuck off, old man. <laughs> it, was just, it was just really... Classic, man. Uh, but the first match of the night, we saw Crimson versus Robert Roode in a Bound for Glory series. Um, the matches that, the moves in this match that really stood out to me was, it was kind of like, almost like a, uh, a, f a Falcon's Arrow, it was like a, like a twisting suplex into like a Takamuchi Nuku driver. Um, we've seen Crimson's version of a modified T-Bone suplex, which Taz basically, uh, basically called it. Um, we see Robert Root hit his second rope flipping neckbreaker, which really yeah, stood out I to me. I was going to say that the uh, Robert Roode hitting the neckbreaker, especially if he really does legitimately have an arm yeah. injury. Which you saw him favoring him when he hit the mat. Yeah, but you know what? Is, he, is, is he, it a real injury, or is it just a work, and that's kind of how they're evolving the storyline? I honestly don't know at no. this point, but I mean, if he does have an injury, that was impressive, the moves that he was pulling and off every tonight. every great wrestler, I'm not saying that there isn't many, there isn't a lot of them, every great wrestler always has the double A stop behind Buster. Uh, double A spine buster, sorry. And, you know, we see a Fuji armbar. You know, we see Crimson's 
spine buster finisher. I mean, you, you're going to run into a lot of wrestlers that almost have the same variation of the same moves. Yeah, oh, you but are. What, what stood out to you in this match? What really stood out to me in this match is that Crimson was dominant yet again. Um, you know, he went out there, and the kid's just got so much fire. He's got so much potential, and I really feel like he's actually starting to gain momentum now. Yes. You know, I'm not saying that Robert Roode isn't or doesn't still have momentum on his side, but in this particular contest, the further the storyline and further this whole Bound for Glory series, it was very important for Crimson to pick up the win. He, I think Crimson's going to become a big deal in the next several months. Yes. Um, I could probably see him going to the pay-per-view after Bound for Glory, and then losing his undefeated streak. Um, yeah, but the biggest news in the, for Crimson right now, he moves up in the brackets to 31 points. I know. Seven more points in the Bound for Glory series. Yes. And he, he's got a very good chance now. But we still have weeks to go. Yes. That's what makes this so exciting. Months. And it's not just impact. These guys are small forwards at house shows. You know, it, it's phenomenal. So yes. you go to a house show, now you're seeing a tangible thing. Okay, this guy's gaining seven points, not... Or ten. Yeah, they're going to fight for the title, and we know it's not going to change hands, yeah. more than likely. Now it's like, damn, who's going to get that seven points? Who's going to move up the leaderboard? Yeah. I think it is making it a little bit more exciting. I definitely like this concept a little bit more than the championship rankings they had last year. Yeah. Even though that wasn't, in that wasn't interesting. That was an eight-card stud? No, no. Remember when Angle had to go through the top ten contenders... Oh, yes. Before he would yes. go for his title. I mean, it was... Which he got shafted at, but it worked up to a pretty damn good storyline. Dude, he made it up to, like, two or three. Yeah, he made it up to uh, Bound for Glory 10-10-10, and then wound up getting screwed. Well, remember, that was kind of just... He w he didn't beat all ten to make it to Bound for Glory. I mean, what was he up to, like, two or three? But I, yeah. that's, that's, that's neither here nor there. Um, it was a great match. I do have to agree. It was very fast-paced. Yes. And I have to admit, all the contests tonight were fast-paced. They were, just like... If you blinked, you were missing a move tonight. Oh, hell yeah. And that, that's the way it should be. Um, you want to go into the next segment? Uh, yes, is that's the uh, the triple threat match, right? Uh, no, we have the segment with Brian Kendrick and Abyss. Yes, uh, we see, basically, we see uh, Abyss, you know, ripping through backstage. He's, you know, looking for his mask that, uh, that we find out sooner in a couple of seconds that Brian Kendrick has. I mean, he's got this poor guy up against the wall, and he's like in a bis and he's like, and the guy's like this, and well, I don't know, I don't know, I don't know. <laughs> and then you see basically Brian Kendrick uh, with this Jedi-like robe, and uh, basically wearing his mask. And you know, for a second there, he looks like a skinny version of a fist with his beard poking yeah. out. Yeah, <laughs> he sure did. A small, tiny version. Oh well, I got a quick rundown for this segment. We see Kendrick in the ring with a fist's mask. He calls out. Um, Abyss, and he wants to kind of share some thoughts with him. He really doesn't want to fight. He promises to return the mask once Abyss comes out. Yeah. Uh, we see Abyss come out with a towel over his head, completely hiding his face. And I remember earlier days in TNA, Abyss wasn't really ashamed to show his no. face. The mask was, you know, part of his gimmick and part of who he was, but if he had to show his face, he showed his face. I mean, now it seems like he's completely afraid to show his face. Yeah. Is he afraid of who he's become? I, I really don't know. I mean, he's become a really nasty son of a bitch in the last oh, 10 months. Oh, definitely, yeah. I mean, you can't deny that. I mean, since Bound for Glory, even before then, I mean, when he uh, impaled Rob Van Dam, I mean, he's been a nasty son of oh, a bitch. Oh, yeah. Um, he's kind of taking, his character's taking just a turn lately, though, with the whole reading the Art of War, and uh, he's become more of a, uh, a philosophical character, you know yes. what I'm trying to say? He's very deep in his thought. And I kind of like that in the fist. He's not just a, a crazy monster. He's a he's a smart monster. He's a crazy smart monster. Yeah, yeah you know what I mean. Um, you know, basically the the outcome of this, we see Brian Kendrick give him the mask, and then he's basically waiting there uh, to see Abyss's reaction. Then Abyss just violently, brutally like beats him. Oh, he beats him down. He uh, hits him with a couple hard punches in the ring. It ends up uh, outside the ring. He throws him into the barricade, brings him back into the ring, hits a couple uh, hard moves, goes to leave comes back and hits a huge black hole slam to kind of finish it off. Yes. I mean, a huge black hole slam. Yeah, he he won him right away. Well, yeah, you also got to think, though, Brian Kendrick is only like a buck thirty, a buck I know. forty. And you know how much uh, power much this has? I mean, exactly. I'm, I'm surprised he didn't put a Brian Kendrick through the mat. You know what? I would really love to see one of those. A match that actually breaks the ring. <laughs> but I guess you need, like, the, Brock Lesnar um, and the Big Show to do that. Oh, yeah. 